final problem is one associated with um, ex with extreme values, so-called outliers in either the x or y dimension. And I've got a graph to show you this case. Here's the scatter plot between two variables that are not related to one another. The correlation statistic is very close to zero, meaning that this scatter plot has no relationship, and the p-value of that correlation is 0.4. So it's a highly insignificant correlation, close to zero, not giving us any indication that there's a relationship here. What we do to this, to this scatter plot is we add one new point. And this new point has an extremely large x value and at the same time an extremely large y value. Meanwhile, because there's only one, uh, uh, one outlying point here, you know, this may move the mean from which was over here. It may move the mean a little bit to say over here. But what we are going to have with this point, let's call this point k, is that the cross product of point k, so xk minus x bar times yk minus y bar, this cross product is going to be really, really positive. So this is going to be a really high positive number. The, the addition of just this one positive cross product term to the covariance actually drives the correlation from something close to zero to something close to 0 0.6. Now all of a sudden, the relationship between x and y, the correlation statistic is telling us that there's an extremely significant positive relationship, a moderate to strong positive relationship. All of that is just being caused by the presence of one single outlier. So when you compute your correlation analysis, it's always a requirement that you, that you visualize the data with a scatter plot simultaneously. Because you need to be picking up on things like the presence of outliers, or the presence of nonlinear relationships, or the presence of non-monotonous relationships, in order to apply Pearson's correlation statistic confidently. Finally, I want to give you some examples of Pearson's R for some very peculiar scatter plots. In fact, the first two rows aren't peculiar at all. So what we see here is that Pearson's correlation is strongest whenever the scatter plot is as close to a straight line as possible. So here we have a peer, a cor so these are different values of, of Pearson's R. So for this scatter plot, we have r equals point uh, of 1. That's because all the points are precisely on a line. Here we have uh, a scatter plot of minus 1. All the points are on a line. But what I want you to see is that all of the plots in this middle row, all of these plots in here, have Pearson's r equal to 1. Well, except this one over here. So. One way to think about this is so long as the scatter plot is along a straight line, it's going to have a Pearson's R of plus 1 or negative 1, depending on the, the slope. But what you mustn't be confused with is the fact that Pearson's R doesn't depend on the slope of this line. So here we see a fairly steep slope, and here we see a fairly flat slope. So long as this fairly sl uh, flat slope is not equal to zero, so long as it's not a perfectly flat line, then we're going to have Pearson's R equal to one. It doesn't matter. Uh, the strength of the linear relationship does not depend on the rise over the run. It just depends on whether or not the scatter plot forms a straight line. So in this first row, we have uh, different values of R. So here we have r declining in value to zero. And what we see happening as r declines is that the cloud of points is getting more and more dispersed. And when the cloud basically has no discernible slope whatsoever, that's where r equals zero. And then as it 
becomes more and more negative and more and more uh, linearly negative, the r gets closer and closer to minus 1. So here we see r changes not based on the slope of the line, but rather it changes based only on the dispersion of the point cloud around the line. Finally, in this last row, I want to show you a problem with correlation. And that is that correlation is only able to detect linear patterns, linear relationships between x and y. I would say that there's a very strong pattern between x and y in all of these cases along this bottom row. But in none of these cases is the pattern linear. There's no discernible slope uh, in any of these cases. And in fact, if we were to compute correlation on any of these cases, all of the correlation statistics would equal zero. So if we didn't draw a scatter plot and we just computed correlation, our statistic would basically misguide us and say, well, x and y are independent in all of these cases. But clearly there's a strong pattern between x and y in all of these cases, and we need other types of statistics in order to detect them.